Hey everybody, welcome to Matt Connerton Unleashed, the television edition. I'm your host, Matt Connerton, and uh, we are here as we are every Wednesday, and uh, we have a great guest with us today. I'm sure we're going to have a lot to talk about. Bob Ballard is with us. How are you, sir? Good, how are you? Good. I almost forgot you were coming on, and then your wife posted something about it, so <laughs> <laughs> we are kind of talking about that uh, uh, off air before yeah, the show. Wife. Bob, Bob's wife is a, a big fan of, of yours. She uh, supports everything you do, which I think is great. Yeah, she does. If you ever need a publicist, you should hire her. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I have to. No, no. <laughs> so um, we have uh, we have a lot to talk about. You got a lot of stuff going on. I've got a, I've got a whole stack of stuff here. You got you got uh, you're an interesting guy. You got multiple business cards and you got I, all, I stay I, I busy. Almost, I almost don't know where to start. <laughs> Let me ask you about. Um, Actually, uh, I'm, I'm really interested in, in your um, Second Amendment work, uh, Second Amendment Foundation training division. You yeah. do, uh, can, can you talk to us about that? What, what exactly do you do as far as training? And Well, the Second Amendment Foundation training division is all about uh, the defensive use of firearms, whether yeah. it be uh, handguns, uh, rifles, carbines, basically, or shotguns, uh, because there really is not a national program that actually will show you how to do that. Mm -hmm. Okay, the NRA programs, they, although they have a couple handgun uh, that are, you know, personal protection in the home, personal protection outside the home, they're, they're, they're really kind of antiquated uh, classes. And they have nothing as far as carbine or, or shotgun. Really? Okay. Everything, okay. Every, you know, NRA shotgun is all about sport. It's all about shooting in clays. Yeah. Okay, same thing with rifle. It's all about target shooting, you know. So, um, you know, there, there was a you know, a big hole in, in the training. And if you look at, you know, why people are buying guns nowadays, uh, you know, 20 years ago, it used to be uh, hunting and, and sport. Now it's completely flipped. It's it's now the reason why people are buying guns is, is home protection and, and personal protection. Why do you think that is, by the way? Because I know statistically, according <laughs> to, you know, FBI crime stats and whatnot, yeah. it, it would appear that we're becoming a less violent culture Mm -hmm. at least in terms of reported crimes, right? So why do you think the escalation in people being concerned about home protection? Simple, more guns. Yeah. Every, everybody's buying guns. Right. Uh, after Sandy Hook, uh, it, it, was, it went nuts, okay? Yeah. And it had you know, the exact opposite effect that they thought it would have, okay? Instead of people getting rid of their guns, everybody went out and bought guns, <laughs> okay? And, but they need, you know... Uh, good training to in order to you know stay alive in, sure. in a in a situation sure and um, you know that's that's the name of the game right and, you know the Supreme Court has already said many times that uh, when you dial nine one one the cops don't even have to show up okay they're they're there to protect society as a whole not you the individual mm. right so you are your first responder. Right. Okay. You are in, you are in charge of your own personal protection. Well, what's the expression? So, when when seconds count, the police are minutes away. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. So, so you know, the Second Amendment Training Division was was created to, uh, you know, basically fill that gap in, in the training. I'm surprised that the so, NRA, in terms of, doesn't have something in terms of a national program that's not, you know, as you said, antiquated. That mm -hmm. that, that actually surprises me. Well, last I heard, they they were working on a defensive carbine. Uh, from what I hear, they've been working on it for four years or really? so. Really? And it still hasn't hit them, you know. <laughs> I wonder if it's a matter of, I mean, the organization is quite large, well, and I know sometimes with large organizations, it's almost like a dinosaur where the... The lawyers get in the way. Yeah, yeah. And, the, and the head is so detached from the body, it's hard to get yes. stuff going, too. Yes, it is. Um, plus, I mean, yeah. obviously, too, with the NRA, anything they do uh, comes under scrutiny of the anti-gun groups of course. and, and, and all, all that kind of stuff. So of I'm sure some of that gets in the way, too. Yeah. So, well, you know, I mean, the, the NRA has... It has always been about you know target shooting and uh, sport. Yeah. Okay. And but you know they have to change with the times because right. people you know the reason why people are buying guns is much different than they than it was 25 years ago. Do you think some of that has to do with the perception um, that uh, you know I I I think some of this is a bit gets a bit over the top, but there are these ideas out there that 
you know, the UN is going to come and take everyone's guns, you know, the conspiracy theory stuff, or, or even, you know, Obama somehow is going to figure out a way to take everyone's guns. I've, I've heard stories of, you know, gun shops, they, they put up uh, the yeah. president's picture with, you know, salesman of the month underneath his name. I mean, do you think some of that drives that, the, the oh, of course. increase in sales? Of course. I mean, we're, we're, the way our government is right now, anything can happen. Mm -hmm. Okay. I mean, we've never been in times like we are right now. Okay. Uh, I, I never thought that, you know, I had to store ammunition just in case. Sure. You know, but it's the reality of where we are, you know. And, you know, the the entire country seems to be a little upside down, you know, where we're, we celebrate criminals and we, you know, put down heroes. So it, it's everything is backwards. And people are scared because can, they don't know what's going to happen. Can you expand on that a little bit? On, uh, on in terms of us being upside down and we we you know celebrate criminals and, and et cetera like what, well, what, just, what do you just, mean exactly just look how Obama celebrate you know he sends three people to uh, Freddie Freddie Gray's uh, funeral and none to the cop who got who got killed in New York mm. okay so I mean, it's just it's just nuts the way our government is and and that's that makes everybody uncertain about our future mm -hmm. okay. So, you know, it's that's why, you know, I have to say one thing about Obama. He has been good for business. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I, I, I hear that. Uh, I hear that from everyone. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, you know, we're we're selling, you know, millions of guns. You know, the the background checks are, you know, 18 to 20 million a year since he took office. So, yeah. I mean, you just. It just blows you away. You know what's interesting yeah. about that, the background check thing, is that it, um, because the, the, the background checks obviously having increased, in a way, it kind of bolsters the argument against additional background checks. You know how the anti-gun groups are always trying to push for some sort of additional background check on top of what already is in place. Mm -hmm. But if what, al if what already is in place appears to be working as well as it does, yeah. then it, it really, you know, it's almost like, well, all these people are buying guns, so we have to do something yeah. more in terms of background checks. And it's like, but wait a minute, the reason you know that all these people are buying guns is because there are increased background checks. Yeah. So why, uh, you know, from their well, standpoint, to add another layer of bureaucracy on top of the back, that? Is the background checks really don't work anyways because criminals don't go through the background checks. Right. They break into houses and they steal other people's guns. Right, right. Okay? <laughs> um, yeah. You know, they're not going to, you know, go and try to get a license to carry. Mm -hmm. um, the background checks basically is just a hindrance on, you know, the law abiding person who is trying to protect himself. Sure. Okay. Um, at least there is no, you know, there's no waiting periods or anything like that. You know, the big things that, um, you know, Bloomberg and those and all those guys, you know, mums demand action are, are against uh, trying to get the background checks is to on the private sales. Mm -hmm. Right. Because in New Hampshire, I can sell you a gun today without a background check okay okay but it's on me okay if i you know if i don't check you out you know let's say you're a felon okay and i sell you a gun and you go out and kill somebody it's on me right okay because that believe it or not that that serial number is traceable sure even though there's not supposed to be a registry in the united states but sure <laughs> and so you know it's a good idea that you you ask them for a a pistol revolver license mm -hmm. okay if they don't have one uh, then I say highly suggest, you, you know, even on a private sale, you bring it to an FFL and have them go through a background check. That way you're safe. What's that, FFL? Uh, Federal Firearms License. Okay. A, a dealer, gun yeah. store, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. So. How do you feel about, it? you know, here in New Hampshire, uh, they're trying to get constitutional carry, which I don't think will ever, yeah. well, I shouldn't say it will never. But I don't think in the near future it will it will become law. I yeah. mean, how how do you feel about that? Is that something you're in favor of? Of course, yeah. I'm. I actually I'm involved in the whole process because um, I, being the NRA election volunteer coordinator in New Hampshire, yeah, um, I'm basically the, the liaison between the membership and in the NRA corporate. Yeah. So I'm involved with uh, the the gun alliance in New Hampshire, and it, it's kind of an informal you know gun alliance. But sure. Uh, all the gun groups in New Hampshire, where we used to all argue, okay, now we have gotten together and we've actually created an alliance and we actually put that bill into the House and the Senate. Oh, okay. 
and uh, you know we got it through the House, we got it through the Senate, and we just got to get Maggie to sign it. But she's not going to, right? She's I mean, already I, said she's not. Right. <laughs> yes, but, you know, are there the, there's, are, there's a lot of things in play there, though, because sure. because Maggie wants to run for Senate next year, and boy, it would be nice if she picked up a little bit of the gun vote when she did, wouldn't it? It would. <laughs> um, the, the other the other show that I do, Rock, Paper, Hand Grenades, with, with yeah. uh, Gary, we've been, we've been talking about this and kind of speculating that if she um, – if she vetoes it, you know, because he was saying that he couldn't see any political reason for her to veto it when, mm -hmm. you know, in New Hampshire, you know, even among a lot of Democrats, they're very pro Second Amendment in this state. But my counterpoint to that was, you know, she's if she is thinking long term and thinking about going to the Senate, trying to get to the Senate, mm -hmm. she's probably also thinking about outside money, outside donors that she's got to depend on. And sure. if there's, sure. you know, these anti gun groups that yeah. want to give her money or perhaps already do, I don't mm -hmm. know. But um, there may be some pressure on her, some outside pressure on right. her to to well, veto it. It also doesn't coincide with the agenda, you know, so. You know, the good chance is that she's going to veto it. Right. And then, you know, we work to try to get enough votes for the override. And by so. the way, you said something interesting, too, about uh, an alliance forming amongst these gun groups that, that have been at odds with each other. I yeah. mean, that I assume that's a relatively recent development, right? Because I've, also, I've yes. often heard people lament that, you know, these, uh, these, these different groups. I mean, I think, what are there, four major groups in New Hampshire? Well, there's five. Groups? Yeah, five, five. now. Yeah. Um, and, and they, you know, it's like, they all ultimately, you would think, have the same goal, and yet they just can't get along. We all do have the same goals. It's just all in the details. Yeah, yeah. You know? It's it's sort of like the you know Democrats and Republicans. You know, uh, two parties, one agenda. It just they only <laughs> argue over who's going to get control. Right, right. <laughs> Well, so. plus there's money in arguing over who's going to get control. If you're arguing all the time and not actually solving anything, it allows you to raise more money. Right. There's really so, no reason to solve problems but, <laughs> if you think of it from a business standpoint. No, the uh, women's <laughs> the women's defense league in New Hampshire is um, probably the newest group in New Hampshire, and Susan Olson uh, is actually the one that brought every all these groups together. Okay. She did all the footwork, and she's doing a great job. Okay. She really is. Wow. So. Okay. Well, that's uh, that's progress, I, I guess. That's um, mm -hmm. is uh, some of the some of the arguing in the past was it over. Uh, because I know sometimes, um, and you see this with all issues, obviously, not just Second Amendment stuff, but mm -hmm. there's that, um, do we compromise on this to try to get to where we're going, or do we say no compromise and treat everything like it's all or nothing? Is that Does that kind of, well, kind of play into some of it? That's I've, kind of been my impression, but I haven't watched it too closely either. Yeah, a lot of it in the past has been just you know minor details. Mm. Uh, some of it was because of NRA, right? Yeah. Because uh, NRA is the granddaddy of all, you know, and they... Basically, you know, the local guy thinks he controls everything. The lobbyists in, in New Hampshire. Sure. And I, I'm probably going to get my, you know, my butt uh, <laughs> reams for saying that, but yeah. <laughs> but that wouldn't be the first time. <laughs> sure, sure. Hey, we like a little controversy on this show. That's right. Huh? It's good for it's yeah. good TV. Um, about the NRA, I mean, do you find in your conversations with people and and whatnot and being involved in legislation, are there mm -hmm. a lot of just just basic misconceptions people have about the NRA? Well, there are. Uh, a lot of them, they don't, you know, they fail to actually do the research mm -hmm. and they fail to think about why the NRA does certain things. Sure. Good example of that would be Harry Reid. When we backed Harry Reid um, back in, I think, I can't remember, 08 or something like that. I was going to say, I know he's, he's a Democrat, obviously, but he's pretty yeah, pro Second but, Amendment, I think. Uh, well, up until about 2008, he was always kind of wishy-washy, really? but he, he voted mostly for, you know, pro-gun, but um, basically when Obama came on the scene, he was basically all anti-gun. Okay? But we yeah. did back him because um, he was most likely to win, mm -hmm. okay, over his opponent, and if we would have lost uh, Harry Reid's seat in the Senate, okay, which the president of the Senate. Yeah. Okay, if he would have lost, most likely the president of the Senate would have been uh, Dick uh, Dick Durbin. Yeah. Or Harry, uh, what's his name, Schumer or something. Oh, like that. Chuck Schumer. Yeah, and which are the two most anti-gun sure. senators there are. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So you know, 
and that's the reason why they backed Harry Reid. Okay. Okay. So they they always have some pretty good reasons why they do things. Sure. It's just that a lot of people don't understand why they're doing things. Okay? Right. Because I and can see somebody it, on the outside it, just it, being like, "Why would you back right. this guy? He's a Democrat. He must be anti-gun." Exactly. And, and you know, the NRA does it like a chessboard. Okay. They play yeah. it like chess. Yeah. And it, Which is it smart. really is. A lot of it is yeah. a game. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So. Yeah. Um, yeah, I can imagine a lot of people because I'm sure, uh, well, I know just from talking to people, a lot of people assume, you know, all Democrats are anti-gun. And, you know, the reality yes. is, I mean, just like, you know, you've, you've got yeah. uh, your, your typical Northeastern liberal or West Coast or whatnot. There are a lot of misconceptions out there. Yeah. Right? yeah. Not, not all Democrats are anti-gun. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Not all cops are gun guys. Okay. A lot yeah. of cops, you know, strap on a gun at the beginning of the day and they put it on the shelf at night and they don't touch it. Right, right. Okay. Um, they qualify, you know, once or twice a year and that's it. They don't they don't practice other than that. Sure, okay? sure. But on the other hand, some do. Right. Okay. Uh, so, you know, you know, misconceptions. <laughs> right, <So>. right. <laughs> yeah. Plus, people, I think, just reflexively will think of things in, in uh, you know, very, very black and white and, and, right. and kind of oversimplify everything. Yeah. Um, so um, in terms of training, so uh, you, you do that, you know, for um, what is what is defense uh, defense strategies? Because obviously this is this is part of the training that you do. Defensive Strategies is my or company. De my defensive local, Strategies, right. I'm sorry. My local company right. here in, in New Hampshire. And I love the logo, by the way. <laughs> and we, we, regular viewers know why, because we will both you like, You like the day. font. I do like the font. <laughs> I'll just say it. it. It reminds me of the KISS logo. I don't yeah. know if you can see that at home, but anyway. And defensive Strategies basically <laughs> is the company that I run, and uh, we do a lot of classes, mm -hmm. anywhere from you know basic handgun to situational awareness classes. Um, basically, we're teaching people how to stay alive, how to be situationally aware. Sure. How to, you know, keep track of what's going on around you instead of being, you know, buried into your cell phone. Right. Um, that in itself you know, must be a challenge, getting people to, uh, because well, of course. It, it, we live in an era where everyone's buried in their cell phones. Right. Yeah. And, you know, you have to understand the, the criminal psychology of what they look for, how do they pick their targets. Sure. Okay? They look for people who are not aware. Mm -hmm. Okay. If they can surprise you and you look weak and, okay, you're most likely going to become a target. Right. Okay. Because criminals are everywhere. Right. Believe me. Oh, yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, you know, if you, you know, carry yourself with confidence and you're, you, you're aware of what's going on around you, most likely you'll never become a victim. So... Interesting. Um, and now, when did uh, when did you start the company? Oh, it was about 2010, 2011, somewhere okay. there. Okay, so it's been a few years. Now, has that been uh, has that been kind of on the uptick uh, over the years, or uh -huh. is it pretty just kind of yeah, steady? Yeah, our classes are, are are usually pretty full. Yeah, especially some you know our basic pistol class, which is the the NRA flagship class. Okay. Um, the handgun stuff is usually pretty pretty full. Yeah. Yeah, because, you know, everybody's buying handguns. Sure. Everybody's sure. carrying handguns. Sure. And, you know, more guns on the street. Criminals don't know who's carrying who's not. Right, exactly. So. Yeah. It's like they say an armed society is a polite society. <laughs> I, I think I, I think New Hampshire is a great I example. I surely of believe that. that. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, what's the ratio, uh, male to female? Do, do a lot of women come in for oh, gun yeah. training? Oh, yeah. A lot yeah. of women. Uh, my last pistol class was 15 women and five guys. Oh, no kidding. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. So, yeah, it's uh, yeah, women are taking control of their lives. Right. Definitely. Right. So. Yeah. No, that's that's uh, that's good to see. Um, you also, by the way, uh, let's talk about this because you're. Um, I know you're a, a private investigator, or is that is that what you what you, what, what do you call it? A, a private detective, private investigator. Private investigator? Yeah. Yeah. Tell yeah. me. Yeah. Do a little bit. Of, well, I started that when I uh, when I got hooked up with the company and started doing fugitive recovery. And Doing what? what? Fugitive recovery. Fugitive recovery. Bail, okay. bail enforcement, basically. Okay, like a bounty hunter. Pretty much. Like yeah. like dog the yeah. bounty hunter. Oh no no don't <laughs> don't go there. <laughs> I just he, dog the bounty he hunter is like not a, a bounty hunter. That's, that's 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 all t that's all TV. Yeah okay? yeah. It's all commercialized. In fact, like like most reality TV, dog, it's not very realistic. A, yeah. <laughs> dog is a felon. His wife is a felon. His daughter is a felon. I didn't know that. Really? Yeah. That's why you can't carry a gun. That's oh, why he carry, I mean, that's why, never really watched the show. That's why he carries a paintball gun. Does he really? Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. 
fact, he was he was going to have a show in Europe, and they found out about his his murder conviction. And this was back in the seventies, early eighties, something like that. Really. And uh, this is nope, can't do it. Wow. So. Huh, I didn't know that. Yeah, now yeah. you do. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, Dr. Barney Hatter is, uh, you know, I don't consider that real. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. <laughs> but, uh, no, yeah, Fugitive Recovery in New Hampshire is really, you know, not a lot of money in it because, I mean, the really violent criminals are mm. not let out, okay? Yeah. And the bounties are usually pretty small. So, and the company I was working for, he, he had uh, basically three, uh, three of the, uh, bond agencies locked up. And there's only four in New Hampshire. Okay. So, and so I, you know, I, I got out of that agency and we, we just went into straight private investigation. Okay. And, um, yeah, Wait, it's interesting. Just to clarify, so with the Fugitive yeah. Recovery, these are people who've jumped bail, essentially? They've, yes. They've, they've been released? Uh, right, they've been released on, on bail and they don't show up for court. Okay. So. Okay. Um, I mean, I imagine it's it's pretty dangerous. And you said the the bounties aren't usually that high, so it sounds like it's it's high risk, low uh, low pay, low yeah, pay. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. So D did you uh, did and, you do a lot, lot of and a lot of leg work? Yeah, you know? yeah. Did you do a lot of that uh, before you kind of transitioned out of that part? Uh, and only only about six months or so. Really? Yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, I don't blame you. Got to pay the bills, you know. Right. Right. <laughs> <laughs> So, in terms of, of the the private investigator work that you do now, I mean, yeah. what does it kind of uh, run the gamut in terms of uh, what are you, are you spending a lot of time tracking people down, just not it, necessarily yeah. violent criminals? Or well, one of the one of the things we specialize in is finding missing persons. Yeah. Okay. You know, old old uh, uh, army buddies or whatever it is. You okay. know, long lost brothers or you know, it can be anything. Yeah. Uh, we do investigation as far as you know is is you know. Is my wife cheating, or is my husband cheating? Or, you know that kind of stuff. Huh. Uh, quite a few of them are uh, investigating cops. No kidding, <laughs> really? Yeah. 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 So, don't want to go too far into that, but right, right. No, I understand. <laughs> I understand. Um, do you get? Uh, I, I mean, do you get some some strange ones that are kind of outside of those examples? I mean. Oh yeah. Yeah, I had one. I had a call this week, actually, uh, and a woman in I think it was Portsmouth, and she was being I guess she's being uh, controlled by this guy in, in Seattle, and I guess he's in, you know mind control cult or something like that, and and she just went on for an hour, and I just I really don't know how I can help you. <laughs> wow. Yeah, yeah, it was. And then she told me she was, you know, she's calling from a, a homeless shelter. And it's, it's huh. just, I don't know. I, I don't even know where to start with a mind control cult, you know. <laughs> right. Did she mention the name of the cult? No. <laughs> I'm no. wondering if there's no. an actual an actual cult somewhere that. Uh, uh, th th I'm not really sure. That's, that's I mean, I know I know yeah. the CIA was doing, you know, M MK Ultra back in the 60s, but supposedly that was killed. Right, right. You know? Uh, I'm sure they perfected it, though. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure they're not picking on this poor girl. <laughs> but you, but you hung in with her for an hour, huh? Yeah. That's well. What? Yeah, probably about forty minutes. Yeah. Well, I mean, well, it I, sounds like it was. You know, I was, I was intrigued. You know, right. Because, right. Yeah. It sounds like it was interesting you know, to, to listen to her. You know, because she was going on, and she really believes this. She really <sighs> believes that it's, you know, this is what's going on. Yeah. So, uh, you, you get all kinds. You yeah. Really do. Yeah. So, has um. Over the time that you've been doing that, has it changed much? Because, you know, it seems like it's um, the Internet makes it easier and easier to find oh, yeah. people. So yeah. I would think that has the work become easier or has it become more challenging in some ways? Or how it has it changed? It has become a lot harder to bring business in. Interesting. OK. Uh, in fact, a lot of private investigators are stopping because it's, you know, the Internet did, does put a lot of information that, that, you know, right at your fingertips. Right. So, uh, and you know, of course, cost. You know, the yeah. economy. The economy itself is not that great. People don't have a lot of extra cash right. to be, you know, to spend, be spending on private investigators. Sure, sure. So, yeah, it has changed. Yeah. But you know, again, uh, things are some things are easier because of technology, because of the little gadgets that we, you know, that we have available mm. to us. You know? <laughs> but you know, again, 
it's complying with the laws and everything else. You know, we yeah. get people that, you know, hey, can you put a tracker on this car? Well, no, we can't. Right. <laughs> That's right. a privacy issue. Right. You know, if you own the car, yes, we can do that. But if you don't own the car, the car's not in your name, then no, we can't. Yeah. Okay, even, even if it's your husband's car, it, it, we just can't, you know. Yeah, so. yeah. They don't understand that. You know, private investigators are not any anything close to law enforcement, mm -hmm. okay? And, you know, we're, we're basically private citizens, okay? So, you know, we don't have access to police records or anything like that. Sure. Okay, so, you know, that's what, you know, the first thing we try to make them understand. Yeah, because that's got to be something, too, that, that people have a lot of misconceptions about based on television and movies and books, oh, yeah. and, you know, yeah. and... and well, again, the, the laws differ from state to state. Sure. Okay. And in New Hampshire, you do have to be licensed through the Department of Safety. Uh, if you're armed, you do have to go through a shoot and call every year. Okay. But that that's, you know, that's it. Yeah. Okay? It doesn't give you any special privileges. It right. It doesn't give you <laughs> access to, you know, any other records that you wouldn't normally have access to. Right, right. So. Yeah. No, oh, that's interesting. Um, are there, uh, I mean, how how is the relationship between generally between private detectives and law enforcement? Because I wonder if law enforcement, if, if some of those folks sometimes, um, and again, I mean, I, I know there's, there's a lot of misconceptions. Do they sometimes get annoyed with private investigators, you know, sort of? No, usually like private investigators in New Hampshire have to, you know, either have to have a, uh, I think it's a two or four year uh, criminal justice degree. Oh, okay. Uh, they have to be ex-law enforcement. Oh, really? Or, okay. Uh, or you have to work for an agency. Oh, so there's, and, there's a lot of requirements uh, then. So yeah. usually, you know, a lot of times they're, you know, ex-law enforcement that have retired and gone into private investigation on their own. Okay. So usually the, the relationship is between, you know, private and law enforcement is usually pretty good. Okay. But... Um, because that's another Depend, trope. Depending on, depending on, okay, if you're a bounty hunter, it's a whole yeah. different story. <laughs> right, right. Well, I was going to say, too, another trope you see on, on TV and in movies yeah. is, is with uh, when it comes to private investigators is they have this kind of contentious relationship with the police, and yeah. the police are always saying, hey, get out of here. Let us do our jobs. And the, well, the, the protagonist is, it, is it, the PI. Is if very, you're interfering with the, an on ongoing active investigation yeah yeah okay uh they don't like you poking around of yeah. course yeah okay? <laughs> and but we don't usually get involved with that kind right of stuff, right okay? yeah yeah um you know occasionally it might happen but you've got to, when you do that it has to be you know uh carefully <laughs> these um these websites by the way that you see where um you know because we we talked about how you know, in, information can be easier to, to get now because of the internet and tracking people down and mm -hmm. so forth. But uh, some of these, I've never really followed through with any of them, but you know, you have these websites, you know, they, they'll tell you, find this person, we'll give you this info or whatnot, but you have yeah. to pay money to, to get that, you know, or they, mm -hmm. they kind of suck you in, you know, you put in someone's name and where right. their last known address to yeah, you. For nine ninety five, well, you can give you the report. Right, exactly. Yeah. Are those scams? They uh, look like scams to me. Usually, Usually they're, they have information that are readily available on the internet. Okay. Okay. Um, you know, we, we subscribe to a, a service called Tracers, okay, which basically has a lot more information. They okay. Have, okay. And you do have to be somewhat law enforcement, private investigator to get access to that. Sure. Okay. Where, you know, we can find social security numbers and stuff like that. Stuff yeah. you can't, you know, you can't find on the web. Right. Okay. So, yeah, because those always look those always look so sketchy. Those websites. <laughs> oh, yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, they, they might save you some time. Sure, sure. Okay, and you know, a lot of them are outdated. Okay, yeah, so yeah. you know, it's an if iffy thing of what's you know what you get on those reports. Right, right. So, and uh, let's let's talk uh, about I four market, okay. and it's and it's I the number four market. Um, and, uh, now this is also a company that you own? Yes. Okay. I've been doing that for a long time. All right. That, uh, and, and, and what does I4 Market do? That is a web design company, hosting, co-location company that, that I own right here in Manchester. Excellent. And okay. I've been doing that since, oh, geez, 94 when the internet actually first, oh, wow. first got big. I you was, got in early then. Well, yeah, I was, I was an engineer for 25 years and I was using the, the internet before Al Gore invented it. So, <laughs> uh, 
because we used to, you know, we used to use the internet basically for, uh, I was in military electronics for 25 years. Okay. So we were, you know, transferring files and stuff like that because through I, the internet before it became mainstream. Okay, because I was going to say that's where it started, right? The the, the military, it, it began as, as something yeah. the military was using right. to communicate. Yeah, Okay. that was actually back in the uh, late 50s that the internet actually started. Really? Oh, yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. Wow. So. Okay. Um, so you so you started this company in '94. Wow. Well, it started out as RB Associates. Okay. And then and then I after 911 uh, back in 2001, I, I changed the name to I4 Market. Okay. So why why the name change? Uh, well, I was working for a company down in Boston, which did web design. Also, I was the director of marketing over there, and uh, basically, I had to change the name be and put it in my wife's name oh. uh, because of uh, you know the uh, conflict. Of, what's that clause? No compete clause. Yeah. Exactly. Oh, okay. So, and you know, so we did that, and I've been doing that ever since. Was so. Was it not long after you you? Uh, did that that you because I, you don't still work for that other company right no okay yeah no. so uh, at, at what point did you did you decide to to leave the other company when they weren't just, when they were weren't meeting my contract really yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's well, a good time after, to leave after 9 11 <laughs> after 9 11 everything fell out of the you know the industry yeah. yeah okay and they just didn't have the money to meet my contract and mm. i was i was traveling into stoneham every day and it just you know it got to be you know, a burden, yeah. especially with, you know, they, they were only meeting half my contract. Sure. So, as, you know, as far as I was concerned, they were already in breach of contract. Right. So right. I, I gave them my two weeks and, you know, actually a lot of their clients followed me. Oh, that's perfect. <laughs> that's always good. Yeah. No, it's, it's, right. it's always nice to hear a story like that, you know, when you when you yeah. hear about somebody who's in a situation like that with their employer, hmm. you know, but they're they're able to strike out on their own, so to speak. I mean, I mean yeah. even though this was already somewhat in play, but, you know, to be able to make that move right. and, and have and have those people who really like what you do, who are willing to follow you. Yeah. into this other venture that's a great uh, that's a great position yeah, we had I mean, we had different we had differences of you know opinions anyways okay? yeah <laughs> because back then back then that's when you know flash was really becoming big mm -hmm. and search engines you know flash was invisible to search engines at oh, that really? time yeah. okay and they would put up a completely flash you know website and then throw it to me for, for to, to do the marketing on it sure i says what do you want me to do with this? You know? <laughs> it's, just, it's completely invisible to all. And then they would drag me into meetings and saying, what, you know, why this is happening. Right. Said, well, you know, I'm not defending you when I go into these meetings because you don't listen. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so we had a little differences of opinion there also. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know. um, as someone who does this, I mean, do you often find yourself in, a, in, a, in situations where you're just looking at, at websites online and, and you just, you can't help but, even if you're not necessarily scoping out a prospective client, you just have, maybe you're shopping online or something and you're just looking at these different sites going, oh, this one looks like garbage. Oh, this one is awful. This one looks like 1998. Why yeah. don't they update this? Does that yeah. happen to you? Oh yeah, all the yeah. time. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of bad websites out there. Yes, yes, <laughs> yeah. Uh, this the light the latest Google update uh, this month actually last month uh, basically said that if your site is not mobile ready which means it's not responsive to all all the different tablets mm -hmm. you know and mobiles uh, then you're gonna be basically back of the bus in the search engine listings I didn't know about that so I'm glad uh, IPM nation is mobile ready <laughs> <laughs> so I've been kind of busy yeah you know, the past yeah. couple past couple of months building new you know, redesigning sites. Because, yeah. Um, you know, when Google does something, you want to stay up at the you know the top of the search engine. So right, absolutely. Um, do you do you take on a lot of clients who come to you and say, uh, okay, I have this new business, I need a website, or uh, do you do you have a lot of clients who come to you and say, I have an existing website, but I need it rebuilt? Or? Both. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, there's a lot. A lot of nightmares out there, a lot yeah. of nightmare stories about this web guy and that web guy and this oh, web yeah. guy. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And, you know, um, you know, we have a high customer retention because I'm, I'm very proactive, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, we, you know, when they send a request in, you know, it usually gets handled within, a, you know, a couple of hours. Excellent. Not a couple of days. That's excellent, okay? yeah. 
And, you know, I hear nightmares. Well, you know, I told my web guy last week, and it still oh, is yeah. not done. And, and it's, you know, you hear it all over the, all over the place. So. Let me ask you if this story sounds familiar, because I've done a lot of, um, uh, a lot of what I do has been in the music industry. Hmm. And I've, I've worked with a lot of, you know, different artists and bands and played in a lot of bands. And um, uh, something that I've seen over and over again is uh, maybe there's a band and somebody in the band, they have a friend or their girlfriend or wife or whomever who... Uh, says, hey, you guys need a website. I'll do it, and I'll do it for free because they want to help the band. And whenever yep. somebody, and probably uh, th this probably applies to a lot of things in life, but whenever somebody says, I'll build you a website for free, they build it. It looks like crap, and they lose interest after two or three weeks. <laughs> and I'm wondering if you have clients who come to you with that kind of scenario. Yes, that that actually happens a lot, and yeah. that actually has broken a lot of friendships in the past. Yeah. Okay. Because um, you know you have to go to a professional. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because you have to you, if you're serious about your business, have your website done right. Right. Okay? Don't yeah. have it by don't have it done by your friend unless your friend's in the business. Of sure. Course. Sure. Okay. And you know it's just like borrowing money from from family members. Don't do it. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> exactly, so. exactly. Um, what's your, what's your, uh, if you have a philosophy on this, um, sometimes in, in business situations I've been in with, with other people where there's a website involved, there mm -hmm. will be this um, difference of opinion on how much, I, I'm getting into, into the weeds a little bit here, I know, but it's interesting to me, <laughs> how much uh, stuff, Mm -hmm. should be on the home page of the site because some people really dislike a cluttered looking website i don't like a cluttered yeah. looking home page if, if you look right. at the ipm nation home page it's it's fairly clean but then if you look at like a couple of the most successful i would say websites mm -hmm. ever uh ebay and amazon if you mm -hmm. go to those websites there's a lot there and they're kind of cluttered looking i mean do you have a philosophy on that uh, yeah, clean is usually pretty good. Okay? Yeah. But the first thing that you want to do is you want to basically decide who your audience is. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And um, you know your audience basically is going to drive your your website. Yeah. Okay. Uh, if you have you know a lot of things going on like eBay, okay, then yeah, yeah you might have a cluttered homepage. Okay. But is, most is, most companies don't. Is it because of okay. wh whereas it's a commerce site? You know, it's, oh, yeah. it's kind of like walking into a store. You want to see a lot of stuff in front of you and you right. can browse and whatnot. Is that? Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Okay. But, that makes you know, sense. But a normal business website should be, you know, clean. Yeah. Should have enough white space, uh, especially now, okay, because of the responsive nature of the, of the websites, there is a lot of white space on, okay. Sure. Uh, because it has to be able to, you know, enlarge and shrink to to the you know what you're viewing it on whether it's your phone or your tablet or you right know, a full pc yeah so uh a lot of these uh, uh code and a lot of these templates that are out there now have a lot of white space built in so they're very clean i've been noticing you know? that yeah. yeah because it seems like for a period of time the trend was um you know to really kind of fill fill the white, not, not have any white space or try to have as little mm -hmm. as possible. In other words, not have any, any space on, on your screen right. that isn't being used. And then I have noticed, although I never really mm -hmm. made the connection in my head what the reason was, but right. I have noticed over the past right. few years that, uh, that it has gone back to kind of a, that simpler uh, sort of template where, where you do have, mm -hmm. have that, that white yeah. space and it's, yeah, that's, and it's that's, okay. That's because the responsive design of, you know, the nature of the responsive design. Mm -hmm. Uh, because of the you know the, all the different mediums that we have to be viewed on. Sure. Yeah. Well, I know too. You know, so. uh, through uh, you know IPM Nation, we're also an online retailer, and we, we do a lot of online sales through eBay and Amazon. Mm -hmm. And uh, last I looked, we're up to about forty percent now of our sales online are coming through mobile devices because they oh, yeah. they do track that for us, and yeah, and that number increases month there, after month. You know, depending on what again your audience. Okay, there's some sites out there that eighty five percent. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> you really have to worry about mobile mobile phones nowadays. Right. Right. So, so you yeah. have a lot of people at this point then coming to you needing to kind of uh, optimize their their yeah. sites for mobile devices. Yeah. Um, I mean, are we? 
are we eventually going to get to a point, do you think, where that is the main focus, where it's almost where it almost becomes sort of uh, secondary to build a website that's going to look good on, on like a MacBook because it really is first and foremost all about the mobile device? I mean, is that kind of where we're ultimately headed, do you think? Yeah, I do. Yeah. Yeah, I think a lot of the PCs, you know, the larger PCs. Because um, you got these, you know, yeah, you got you these know, great big screens you got, Well, now, you've got but... old guys like me, you know, I I like that big screen. I do too, you know? yeah, yeah, of course, yeah. It's <laughs> nice. Know, the bigger but... the better. It's the fact that as, you know, as I get older and the eyes get worse. Sure, sure, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, uh, But it kind of seems know, like eventually I, you'll get that, yeah, that point. You got this I, big screen with this little website in the middle of it because it's... Yeah, but it's when, all... you know... When I'm out of the office, this is what I got. Exactly. And, um, you know, it, it's very annoying to have to keep scrolling. Mm -hmm. I mean, keep <laughs> zooming in to, in order to read the text. Right, right. Okay, so, again, it's, it's you know, catering to your to your audience. Right, exactly. And, you know, I got, I got some clients that say, my site looks fine on a mobile phone. Okay, yeah, if you if you zoom in all the time, right? You know, <laughs> just can't convince them, right? Okay. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, it's funny. Yeah, it's, it's and that's you know that's that's a tattoo guy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it looks fine. <laughs> okay. Do, do you ever have clients who come to you who say we we want to we want to take what we've got, but we want you to we want you to fix it. We want to keep the website that we have, but we want you to fix it. I, and you yeah. have to say to them, no, 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 we can't fix this. I, I've had all <laughs> I've had all kinds. I've had uh, clients, well, not clients, but people come to me and saying, hey, I my website has a virus, and my hosting company shut it down, and I we need need to get rid of the virus. Oh, okay, yeah. And I guess their web guy couldn't find it. Okay, and so I said, "Yeah, I'll I'll take care of it." Yeah, yeah, yeah. and we did. You yeah, know, we went in, uh, removed, and it really depends on you know what platform you're hosting on because you've got Windows Windows servers and you've got Unix servers. Okay. Yeah. We run we run Unix servers only. Okay. okay. I, I don't subscribe to the whole you know putting fifteen hundred users on a Windows box. Right. Because <laughs> my Windows machine can't handle me. Right. Right. <laughs> you know. So we we use all you know all Linux servers and but even Linux servers will get you know sometimes we'll get a not a virus but a you know code that shouldn't be in there. Okay. So yeah, is there a particular industry that is uh, that you've noticed that seems to be particularly bad with websites, where you just see a lot of bad websites? Particular industry. I know for me, from my vantage point, I because I, I, I do a lot in radio. Yeah. And uh, one of the services that we offer through IPM Nation is we'll, we'll send an artist's music out to college radio stations across the country to get them airplay. Mm -hmm. And the websites of these college radio stations, most of them are, they look, they literally look like they were built in 1998 and haven't been updated in Front any way as templates. far as, yeah. oh yeah, just really <laughs> brutal. So yeah. I just wondered if there's anybody, if there's a particular industry that where you notice you get a lot of people from who they just their websites are just awful. really really <laughs> haven't really haven't been paying attention to you know particular industries and what they're yeah. you know my my clients are all over the board yeah uh from and you might you uh, must, firearms to you know you must uh, get people from around the country right like oh, not yeah. just locally yeah. yeah yeah a good portion of the clientele is in southern california oh no kidding and it's you know get one client and then he told a friend and then he told two friends and, and right. just just worked out that way. Yeah. That's great. That's yeah. great. So, you you do a lot of different things. Is is there one particular yeah. thing that you're most passionate about? Uh, probably the firearms. Yeah. 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 Is you know training people how to use them correctly and how to stay alive in a situation. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Um, you know that's really that my my big thing. But the thing that brings in the thing that pays my bills is the is the websites and the of hosting course. co location. Of course, yeah. Because you know that's the one I've been doing the longest, obviously. Yeah, yeah. So So we talked uh we mentioned at the top of the of, of uh the show, your wife's a big fan. But with you so busy, I mean obviously doing all this stuff, does she ever tell you to slow down, take a break, take her on vacation or something? Uh, eventually, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Every once in a while she does, you know. Yeah. Uh, you're taking the day off, we're going to the beach or you know, so yeah. Have you always lived in New Hampshire? Did you grow up here, or where are you, where are you from? I grew up in Nashville. Nashville, yeah. and uh, lived here most most of the time, except for the time where I was in the army. And yeah. when we when I moved out to the Midwest to uh, for uh, I was engineer and supervisor for uh, Labage Electronics. Oh, okay. 
How long did you live out there? Uh, about three years. Okay. That's oh, not too long. So you've been here most of your life then, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Do you think, let me ask you this, um, because, you know, and I, I, I grew up here. I've, I've been here most of my life myself. We were talking, this will be interesting to, to get your opinion on. Um, again, we, we were talking recently on Gary's show about constitutional carry and, and will it ever pass here. Mm-hmm. And we were also kind of speculating about um, is, is part of the reason why uh, the, the, the residents of New Hampshire aren't more sort of demanding about, you know, let's make this happen. Is, is part of that, do you think there might be a certain, I don't know if apathy is the right word, but because we already have fairly, compared to some states, fairly lax gun laws here, mm-hmm. and because crime is so low here, you know, we're, I, I know statistically we're one of the most heavily right. armed states in the country and with one of the lowest crime rates. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it, do, you, do you think that some, th- there may be a little bit of just, yeah, why, some people thinking, why change anything? We don't need constitutional carry because things are pretty good already. So yeah. why is that necessary? Well, there is a lot of apathy going on, not only in New Hampshire, but all over the country. Sure, I mean, look sure. at what's going on and, you know, why isn't, why isn't there protests like every other day Mm -hmm. because you know just looking at what's happening in this country right so there is a lot of apathy out there and um that is another reason okay is that you know our gun laws are some of the best in the nation yeah yeah okay it's it's very easy to get a pistol revolver license okay but the fact is why should i have to right okay i have a coat on right now i've got a gun on right okay if i'm cold and i want to put on a coat why should i why does that make me break in the law right you know the, it's kind of it's kind of stupid when you think about it it is yeah okay a criminal's not going to apply for a pistol revolver license exactly okay yeah. it only hinders the the you know law abiding who has already if he has gone he's already gone through the background checks and everything else right okay so you know i don't see the mentality in it yeah okay i mean this was a, a law that was enacted in 1923, basically to keep guns out of the uh, hands of questionable people. Mm-hmm. At that time, it was it was basically uh, Jews, the Irish, and uh, blacks. Okay, that's what that law was all about. Okay, so let's you know let's get rid of this law. It's not necessary. Right. Okay? Right. It, it really isn't necessary. So. Vermont, of course, has a constitutional carry. Yes, and, they do. Uh, was, uh, are they, there other states that have it too, other than Vermont? Yes, there's there's Arizona, there's uh, uh, Alaska, Wyoming, uh, Virginia now, uh, and I believe Kansas, oh. if I remember right. Okay, more than so. I thought. Oh, oh yeah, no, there's there's about seven eight states now. Okay, yeah. and Vermont, of course. I mean, it works well for them. I mean, they're just like us, very low crime. They, they've never needed a license to to yeah. conceal carry. Yeah, they've always had constitutional carry. Yeah, and you know, Vermont's a very liberal state. It's just kind of it's kind of weird, but yeah, li- very liberal, but. Don't touch our guns. Right, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, which kind of which makes it, it and taking that dynamic into effect too. I mean, New Hampshire is yeah. much more conservative, obviously, and yet, and yet we can't seem to get this. Yeah, done. not as not as conservative as we want it to be, though. Not as conservative yeah. as it used to be, certainly. Got a lot of you know a lot of people moving up from Massachusetts who sure. you know don't like Massachusetts. They don't like the taxes. They don't like this, but then they move up here and then then they try to change it to what they just moved away from. Sure. <laughs> sure. So yeah, I mean, I feel that New Hampshire has, to some extent, kind of assimilated in, into the rest of the of the Northeast, oh, yeah. and you know, I mean, yeah. I'm not, I, I'm an independent. I'm not a red guy or a blue guy, but I, but mm-hmm. I think just kind of looking at it, I, I feel like you know, um, in in terms of electoral politics, they still talk about New Hampshire being a a, a red state or or a, or a swing state, and I'm like, I don't think so. I mean, yeah. if you look look at the last few elections, yeah, it doesn't, doesn't look like it to me. <laughs> well, again, you know. Um, I lived here a long time, and most of the time it was a red state. Yeah, okay. yeah. So, you know, the last few elections, so probably, the, what, the last 10, 15 years, it's been blue. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, breaks my heart, but what can I, <laughs> what can I do about it? And, well, then, and then we get a guy like Benson. <laughs> then we get, yeah, I know. <laughs> Uh, yeah, don't go there. <laughs> what, what, what were you going to say about uh, 
what, Craig Benson, is that? Yeah, and then we get Benson, and you know he was the only one-term governor we we've, we've just about ever had, all right, because he. You're right. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, he didn't make any friends because no, he didn't. Know, <laughs> he did the same thing that I would do is 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 basically get rid of a lot of people. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> Of. Yeah, you know, he wasn't. Do you, do you want to name names? You can't. No, I'm not, name, I'm not naming <laughs> names. Jeez. <laughs> you'd want to. You'd want to change the the scenery a bit, though, right? Yeah. 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 yeah definitely. Yeah. Yeah. I. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I. Maggie Hassan will not be getting my vote next time around. That's that's for certain. Well, as far as I know, she's running for Senate. That's the rumor against uh, AI. So. Well, the thing is, though, it, it is a rumor. I'll tell you what. Point. Well, I'll tell you what, though, too. Everyone yeah. keeps. Uh, here, I'll start another rumor. Uh, everyone keeps saying she'll be running against Ayotte. I'm not convinced of that because I I would not be surprised if Kelly Ayotte will be on a short list for whoever the Republican nominee is of a potential VP. I really. She's been kissing an, uh, me. She, yeah, maybe. <laughs> she's been. I really feel like she's been maneuvering herself. Yeah into that I, yep. I mean i i it's funny i have this um this mental picture still of uh back in 2012 romney was uh, i don't remember what show he was on but he was being interviewed by satellite yep. uh, and uh and kelly ayotte was sitting right next to him you know she and he was being asked questions she was just silently sitting next to him but i just remember and maybe that's why it sticks in my mind mm -hmm. maybe that's why i just make that connection to her being oh, no, MVP, it's it's, but, it's very possible yeah all right, especially if they're you know whoever's whoever picks her is going up against Hillary. Right. All right. Same situation as McCain and in Palin. Exactly. Okay. Oh, they got a black guy. Well, we got a woman. Yeah. There you go. Exactly. So yeah. So it, it's very possible. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And and she'd be one, you know, not the one I would pick, but right. <laughs> right. And you know, I mean, Hassan's got to be making that calculation that you, mm -hmm. you know, if, if you know, if it's if it's not Kelly, you know, maybe whoever it is is someone I can beat. I'm sure right. she's thinking about it. Who knows? But yeah, just yeah, what's his, just as long as it's not Brown. <laughs> <laughs> He's what a three-time loser now. Yeah, yeah, no kidding, no, no kidding. Um, well, we only have a couple minutes left, Bob. So let's um, let's remind everybody because you got a lot going on, and remind yeah, everybody where they can go online usually. and find out information yeah. and all that. Well, my Defense of Strategies website is basically defenseofstrategies.org, mm -hmm. and um, lots of classes. We, you know, I teach right now about fifty-five different classes, um, all from you know, uh, rifle, pistol, shotgun, situational awareness, all kinds of stuff. Yeah, um, there is there's a good link there if you're a beginner. It says if you know be beginners, click here, and it gives you all the all the beginner classes. So it's, uh, we try to make it as straightforward as possible for them. Sure. Uh, the web design website is i4 market. The letter i number four market dot com, and uh, basically I've basically streamlined that too. I've got it down to three, you know, different packages or a custom pack, you know, oh. custom design if you want. Cool. All right. Whereas, um, you know, it includes all the social media stuff, the uh, search engine optimization, all that good stuff. Yeah. Okay. And a good example is my defensive strategy site. You go type in just about anything gun, you know, training related in New Hampshire. My site's coming up on the first page. Good. So. Good. Uh, it works and it it brings a lot of a lot of clients in. Sure, so. sure. And the private investigation is also on the defensive strategy site. Okay. And that's actually I'm I'm actually working for a guy, uh, Carlson Detective Agency, who is a retired law enforcement officer uh, from Mass. Okay. Okay. He was a Mass State Trooper, and um, you know we just he's been a client of mine for for years and years, and we just hit it off. And yeah. So I'm I'm actually under him right now. Oh, so, very cool. Yeah. Good. Good. Excellent. Um, yeah, the social media part too. It's funny you you, you mentioned that. Um, that's that's become such an important part. Oh, of, of course. Of of everything, and and that's um, drives business. And it, but it's it's funny how many uh, how many politicians don't understand it. Have you noticed yeah. that? Like oh, yeah. it's it's very, it's uh, yeah. you know elections are won and lost on this stuff now, and and a lot of people oh, yeah. just don't get it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Go to Obama's page. He's got like oh. I can't remember like 68 million likes on his on his 
Well, that's the thing. After the 2012 election, <laughs> sure. too, a lot of people were saying that, you yeah. know, the, the Obama campaign, in, in contrast to the Romney campaign, the Obama campaign really understood and embraced oh, yeah. social media in, in a way that the Romney campaign just didn't yes. get it. and they had a lot of inside information. But I won't go there. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'd love to ask you more about it, but we're out of time, so save right. save by the bell. <laughs> there you go, Bob. Thank you so much. This has been great, and for uh, me. don't forget, everybody. Of course, we also have the radio edition of Matt Connerton Unleashed every Tuesday and Thursday night at now at 11 p.m. Eastern on IPMNation.com and our new affiliate at Ohm Times Radio. So uh, you can listen to Jen and I tomorrow night on that. Bob Ballard, thank you again, and uh, we'll get you a link. And uh, we'll get your wife a link once this is up on <laughs> once today's show is up online. And, uh, Thank you. She, she can she can promote that. it for you. Yep, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> and if you're watching live on Wednesday, I'll be uh, back at 6 p.m. with the Honorable Gary S. Hopper, and uh, talk at y'all a little bit later. Thanks. All right.